Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Trying to make a living. Well, in North Carolina. And the amazing thing, I was the only Jew in the temple. <laughs> <laughs> the other Jews heard about the temple, but they were afraid to go near the place. We were surrounded by Gentiles. There were 3,000 Gentiles in this town, and same as Jews. The Jews built a temple, and they were afraid to go in there, so they hired me. There I was, delivering a sermon about Judaism to 3,000 Gentiles. And I got news for you. Don't think I wasn't nervous, because eventually I found out some of them were members of the Ku Klux Klan. Is this, are you kidding about this, or are you serious? No, I'm, I'm really uh, kidding. I didn't think you were that stupid that you were... Yeah, no, no, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> if I knew you were that stupid, I wouldn't have been here in the first place. No, were you... Uh... <laughs> Firstly, I, I heard that you're not too bright, but there's a limit. There's a limit to how stupid even my disc jockey can get. <laughs> get out of business if you don't know nothing. I thought I just got a call from somebody. What happened? To you? <laughs> I'll tell you very honestly. I hope you don't mind my calling your names. You should be used to it. What does this guy want? Looks like he's getting on, he's getting ready to throw me out. I'll tell you what really happened. The truth of the matter is there was only a small community of Jewish people, essentially. What I was saying is serious, but it's an exaggeration. I'm right. I, that's what I meant. In Weldon. You worked as a rabbi in Weldon, North yes. Carolina. And it really was a, a, a very small number of Jews in the temple. Because uh, in these towns, you see, you go into New York, and the major few metropolitan centers, you have large Jewish communities. Just as you have a large colored population and a large Italian population. But if you go out away from the, from the five, six, seven ma major metropolitan centers, you find very, very few Jews percentage-wise. Because the total percentage of the American population is only about one and a half percent Jewish. Close to 2% of the, the total American population is Jewish. There's over 200 million people here, and there's only 4 or 5 million Jews. So they add up to a tiny percentage of the American population. Now, if you live in Chicago, or Boston, or Detroit, Philadelphia, and New York, and L.A., five or six major cities, you get to think that the whole world is Jewish. <laughs> and if you see a Gentile, he, he starts <laughs> to get nervous. If he's, where am I going? I'm surrounded by Jews all over. You, every time they go into a store, they meet a Jew, they say, how do you do? <laughs> Let's make a deal. They, <laughs> they start to wonder if everybody is Jewish, but this is not at all so. Uh, the truth of the matter is there are a tiny percentage of this population. As a matter of fact, of any major minority group, the, sm the Jews have the smallest number. There are more Chinese people in the United States than there are Jews. That's interesting. I didn't know. How many Chinese are there? There's about 7 million Chinese in America. We have to watch out. Are they a threat? I don't think they're a threat. It depends who you happen to bump into. <laughs> Now, I bumped into a Chinese uh, <clears throat> last night, and it uh, was no threat to me. I was a threat to her. Is there anything you'd like to say about Weldon? Do you have any, have any oh, desires well, of going I back to Weldon, I, North Carolina? No, I, uh, I, uh, I would rather send you to Weldon. <laughs> I don't intend to go back there. I had a, I'm having a great time in this business. I'll tell you very frankly. I, have, I didn't intend to become a controversial figure in any respect. I was trying very hard to, to maintain a certain kind of a, of a personality and character that would have as broad a feel as possible so that my comedy could be as commercial as possible and as understood as much by as great a percentage of the people in this country as possible. I had no intention of being a minority comic or a controversial comic. I wasn't interested in, in becoming a, a, a big fighter with Ed Sullivan. I liked Ed Sullivan. I was grateful to him. He gave me one of my first opportunities, not the very first, but the real image that I had in my career was created and uh, developed by Jack Parr. Jack Parr used to discover a Jew every 15 minutes. <laughs> and, uh, and, now if, uh, and now if you call it, he gives you a job even faster. You know, there was so much discrimination against Jews that uh, if somebody knew you were a Jew, especially Jack Parr from the Midwest who never met a Jew, and he saw one, he said he could prove to himself he's a good American if he gives this Jew a job. Then Johnny Carson started to discover colored people. Yeah. Now every time a guy is colored, if he's got talent or not, how do you do? You got the job, you're working, then they try to find out what he does for a living. Now if you're a colored Jew, you never stop working at all. <laughs> 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 because everybody is trying to... I notice this in general. Colored people right now could do anything and everybody gets nervous. Because they want to prove to the colored man that they're not offending him. So they become overly solicitous towards him. Because you're afraid that he'll feel rejected. Or you're afraid that he'll continue to feel uh, this sense of discrimination that he has a right to feel. Because let's face it, you know, discrimination against colored people in this country is the most abominable part of our history. The most disgusting element of our society. The most unfortunate disgrace on anything called democracy. 
How could anybody in, with a clear conscience call a country a democracy that looks a colored person straight in the face and wouldn't rent them a room? And they say they wouldn't rent them a room because they're protecting their own freedom to rent the room to whoever they please. Now, how about this man's right to sleep? How about this man's right to live? Doesn't he have the same rights as a human being that I have? And if I own all the property and I can't give you a place to sleep or a place to eat, then what happens to his rights? His rights no longer exist at all. He's living in a country that doesn't give him a place to live. Could you call it a free society that is, that is destroying his freedom for mine? My freedom not to rent him is more important than his freedom to eat and to live? That's the greatest fraud and the most intolerable disgrace that any country could have calling itself a democracy. So that now when we're giving them this opportunity and this freedom, where many people have a, a great feeling of guilt about the freedom that was taken away from him. Not the freedom that they didn't give him, and it's not my freedom to give to him, because he's entitled to that freedom as much as I am, maybe more so. He was here first. He suffered for this country more than I did. My father came here just before me, an hour. He landed here, and ten minutes later I was born. So my father didn't have to suffer for America. They did. They suffered for America in a way that nobody else did. And then we say we're going to grant them our, their freedom as though we're doing them a favor. We're extending ourselves to finally grant them a place in, under the sun, a place in our society, which they have a right to as much as we have. They died for this country in many wars. They suffered for this country as slaves. And they suffered in all the time since the beginning, the inception, that the whole concept of our democracy was even discovered. And we enslaved him. And then when we, when we finally won the fight against the slavery, we kept them enslaved in a different form. First, we enslaved them in chains. Then we enslaved them in streets and on certain corners and within certain blocks and in certain territories, and they couldn't get out of there. It's a worse form of slavery than the slavery and bondage that they had before. This whole thing is a vicious, sick fraud. And anybody that dislikes a colored man because of his skin has no right to be in this country himself because he has no right to call himself a person who's an American. That's not Americanism, that's viciousness, that's venom and hate. And it's a worse kind of hate that never existed under any society that was a dictatorship. Rabbi, I don't know what to say. That was great. No, I agree with you, really. That was great. Well, thanks a lot. Is that all you can say, Rabbi? Thanks a lot. We'll be back with Jackie Mason. We have a little message, a station break, and then we'll be right back. If you have what it takes, take the Coast Guard. The active service where the standards are high. The Coast Guard has a special place for former military aviators. As a Coast Guard aviator, you'll fly a variety of aircraft on such important assignments as search and rescue operations, international ice patrol, and fisheries patrol. If you have what it takes, take the Coast Guard. Getting in is not easy, but it's well worth the try. For information, write Coast Guard, Washington, D.C. She was afraid to come out of the locker. 